All right, what's going on, guys? I'm going to be talking about angle snapping today. Uh, for reference, I'm going to be using Provo Hat's mouse excel driver for this, and uh, this is the driver that I kind of promote here on my channel. And uh, this is one of the features that it has: is you can put angle snapping in here anywhere from like zero to like a thousand or something like that in a way angle snapping is like aim assist for the mouse but it's not exactly the same thing and in order to kind of understand the difference i'm gonna i'm gonna explain how aim assist works on controller and then i'm gonna explain how angle snapping works on the mouse and keyboard so let's take uh, Valorant for example here. If you were on controller uh, right here, this is kind of how aim assist works. There's a there's basically a big bubble around these characters. Um, for different games, it's different sizes. It's also referred to what's commonly called as a hitbox. And uh, sometimes it might be this small, depending on what game you're playing. If you have a really bad game like some of the earlier Apex Legends is that this was kind of one of the problems that they were having is that some of the hitboxes weren't like on the actual feet and stuff like that. But a lot of games like Call of Duty will have a hitbox something like this. Where anytime you move your controller stick in this area here. that's when you get aim assist and what it does is it will slow down your movement once you get inside this bubble here right here and then it'll let you adjust accordingly and it'll also kind of once you kind of get in this bubble too is it'll actually kind of pull whichever direction this character is going in game depending on how strong the aim assist is for that particular game it may pull your crosshair all the way across the screen or it may just pull it just just a few pixels and then let go so that's kind of how aim assist works for the controller there's several different types of, of aim assist when it comes to console and controller but that's the main one is the aim slowdown or sticky aim that's kind of how it works now uh, from the mouse and keyboard it's going to be a little bit different okay because we don't have this box here we have literally this box everything just around just around his this character here that's all you get now what angle snapping does let's say this character was moving this way from right to left okay now Valorant there is a lot there is some verticality and stuff but a lot of the times the strafing is just this way, left or right. Or sometimes they might do like some strafing back and forth. Okay. So if you have angle snapping on your mouse software or if you have Provo Hats Mouse Excel, you can give yourself a little bit of help. Let's put this at 10. Preview, save changes. But in a way, it's going to feel like you're aiming on a grid. You won't be able to necessarily do strong arcs like this, depending on how much you do. But what I mean by a grid is that it's going to be kind of hard for you to kind of like do this when you're aiming. It's your nat the natural feel of when you move the mouse it's gonna feel a lot easier to just shoot straight over and do an almost a straight line. Now that sounds really good, but I think one of the biggest things that I've seen in some of the angle snapping information videos or tutorials or how-tos or whatever, is that they don't ever talk about the software itself. And that is that Depending on how much angle snapping you have and what the, the software says 
whenever you move, it could calculate because this is what the software is doing. It's kind of calculating for you. It's kind of being, it's a, it's being a predictive in a way. It could predict that you're moving just 12 meters based on how fast you're moving your hand and no one's perfect. So you're not going to have perfect tracking necessarily. But then when you get over here, maybe you moved your hand just a little bit more and now instead of 12, we have, it's predicting that you're going to move it 22 meters. And then this line over here, let's say he stopped moving. Well, now it predicted that you're going to move it 10 meters, but maybe he's only moved five. And to my knowledge, there's no way that I know of, of how to figure this out other than literally just going into paint like here and going to your angle snapping software and literally just putting in numbers and see what it does for how it predicts how you're going to do it. S most software that I've seen, uh, for example, like my old G502 mouse, it, it, it had uh, in the software, it literally just had a button that you clicked and it said angle snapping on or angle snapping off. That's pretty much all you got. Didn't give you a number, any kind of parameter. It just either gave it to you or it didn't. So if you use angle snapping, it's kind of hard to describe how it is other than saying you kind of feels like you're aiming on a grid, but I've definitely used it before. And whenever these characters, especially in games where everything is horizontal, it does feel like you have some sort of aim assist because like I said, whenever you move, your natural that it wants to follow kind of that natural because we're aiming on a grid here kind of depending on how much your net the natural way you want to move your hand when you're tracking someone is in a straight line one of the things that's overlooked in angle snapping I feel like is let's say you have a target right here you strafe over with your crosshair once you actually get on target, a lot of the times the angle snapping software will just ignore if you move your mouse a couple of pixels, either left or right or up and down. This is why in a way, some people think that angle snapping feels like aim assist on the mouse is because you move over to your target, you start shooting, let's say he's sitting still and let's say you just you just messed your your shot just a little bit just by a couple of pixels or something like that well the angle snapping software ignores that you moved it off of target and your crosshair stays completely straight and on on target I think that's why a lot of times it does feel like angle snapping is aim assist now those are kind of the benefits of angle snapping now the problem is if you have a target that strafes left jumps up lays down has an SMG or a pistol starts strafing like crazy back and forth and what's going to happen is, is your angle snapping software doesn't know how to track this because it's going to predict, let's say that you moved your crosshair at an average of 18, whatever the term is for it, polling meters, whatever. Okay. It's going to predict that it moves eight, that you moved at 18. But he actually only moved 17 right here. So you overshot right here. Now it's going to try and predict this angle here. But if you're like me, my up and down, especially when I have to move my mouse a lot, whenever I get my full arm into it, 
whenever I'm trying to go up straight, it's not a, it's not that great. So even at a like at this curve right here, probably won't be able to track this completely 100%. And because this guy's moving around crazy and he's got dead silence, he's moving really really fast. So then you way over flick because your angle snapping software thinks that you are actually going to move it 50 times. Okay, so you've undershot here, overshot here, and then whenever he comes back down to do his little drop shot right here, you're literally at this point, your, your angle snapping software just doesn't know what to do because you're moving your mouse too fast for it to even keep up. It's either going to overshoot or undershoot. That's kind of the idea. So, in conclusion, is angle snapping bad well yes but also no in some cases do pros use it no is it fun and should you mess around with it yes seriously don't take aiming too seriously it's always fun to experiment around find out for yourself you know it's just one of those things and every once in a while angle snapping will surprise you I think in the long term it's probably not good to use there are definitely some games though that you can get away with it. Um, Warzone would probably be one of those um, that you might be able to get away with it in. Uh, it's a low time to kill. Uh, a lot of the targets are just sitting still at really far distances and you'll kind of feel that quote aim assist uh, kick in at those long ranges and you'll be able to control recoil and stuff like that without missing your target very much so anyways guys that's all i got for today uh thanks for stopping by and we'll see you again real soon